Thanks for joining us for What's New at CFI, where we bring you insights from our latest courses and behind the scenes conversations with subject matter experts. Get ahead and stay ahead with the latest from CFI. Hello and welcome to the What's New at CFI podcast. My name is Asim Khan, subject matter expert and instructor at CFI, and I'm joined by my colleague, Duncan McKean, who is also a subject matter expert and instructor. Welcome, Duncan. Thank you. So, Duncan, you've been busy at work uh, delivering uh, FPNA, financial planning analysis model for our clients. Is that true? Yes, absolutely. It's been bu- quite busy recording for the last, last few weeks, for sure. And uh, to date, we've discussed um, model design with respect mm-hmm. to uh, FPNA. Mm-hmm. We've also discussed the uh, formatting and revenue forecasting course that you've mm-hmm. recently delivered. And today we'll, we'll talk about uh, what you've done with respect to headcount forecasting and analysis. Mm-hmm. That's also absolutely. a recently delivered course, right? Yep. Okay. Um, would you like to begin? Maybe uh, I know one of the very first sections of the the video that you put together is the model tour. Would you like to give us a model tour? Yeah, like sort of an audio tour of of the model. Really, um, what we're essentially doing with the headcount forecasting is obviously uh, forecasting the the company's em- employees. It's it's a management consulting company that we've modeled for the particular course. But the things that we're teaching you can apply to any type of model. And we're really trying to, we're looking at the costs of the employees really from two perspectives. Uh, One is that um, we're making sure that we're accruing all of the correct costs so that we can get them to the income statement and get a meaningful measure of profit. And, um, And the second perspective is really that we're looking at the costs in terms of the cash flow. So we, we want to look at exactly when the cash is leaving the company to pay those employees and how that's impacting the company's cash flow. And so that we can obviously connect that through to the cash flow statement later in the course. And so the model covers, as you said, various things, not just simply, you know, how many employees are there or will there be in the future, but the costs related to them, things like salaries and benefits and things like that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely right. true. And often when you're modeling benefits, you, you, you'd model benefits typically as a benefits load, which can range from about 20 up to 40%, depending on, on the different benefit structures that the employees have. And we're modeling also bonuses, which can be quite tricky because, as you would know, bonuses don't happen on every paycheck. They typically happen, well, sometimes once a year, sometimes four times a year, it depends. And um, and you want to be able to control the timing of those bonus payments in the model as well, because they can be, the timing can change um, from one period to the next, depending on what's going on with the company. Yeah. Well, we both worked on the sell side, you know, mm-hmm. Wall Street firm on my case and like the equivalent in Canada um, and yours, but those bonuses got paid but once a year, right? Mm-hmm. And that was that was the big day. That's Even it's true, that. yeah, and that's very very typical at the at least the the, the bank owned brokerages. Some of the um, independent brokerages in Canada would pay bonuses quarterly and even some sometimes monthly, if you can believe it. Which was which is a really great thing to have. I'm sure lots of people would love to have that. Um, but it's definitely like, yeah, yeah, it's definitely, sometimes it's, it's too long when it's annual. Right. Right. You know, cause you try to plan things out then who knows if the firm has a bad quarter in December, <laughs> yeah, could, yeah. Uh, devastate your expectations. There are some really nice features that you put into this model. As we know, as employees tenor at a firm lengthens, um, their salary tends to go up and things like that. So mm-hmm. that rise is kind of hard to capture when you're looking at you know, horizontally across a spreadsheet, but you made it very easy by triggering like these up and down arrows for when salary changes. Yeah, that was a new that was a new feature that we haven't put into a model. Um, this is the first time we put it into a model, not because we'd been ignoring it, but because it was a, a very new feature that's come out in Excel where you can put, effectively you can insert tiny little icons in as text characters. Um, and there's a whole, there's literally hundreds of them, but the ones that we found the most useful were up and down arrows in this case. And um, yeah, to your point, when you're looking in this particular model forecasts out for 24 months, so you're looking, you're looking across 24 columns of data, 
it's really hard to see when that particular salary might change, especially especially if it's going from like imagine something going from seventy thousand to like seventy seven thousand, for example. It'd be really hard to see that second seven in the number. So there's a little up arrow which triggers, or if the salary moves down, which we never hope that that is the case, but that that would trigger then a down arrow. So you can easily spot the changes and when they're happening in the model. Well done, and you've included a number of alerts as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love to include model alerts um, for a whole host of, of different reasons. Later in the course, we will see that we're going to have alerts when the company's exceeded the limit on its um, line of credit, for example. These particular alerts are alerting the person updating the model if they've put a number which is inappropriate into a cell. And so, for example, if they leave certain cells blank, it, there, an alert will go off and it will turn like bright orange. If they put in a negative number into a cell where it needs to be a positive number, then an alert will go off as well. If they've over scheduled an employee, if there's 30 days in a certain month and they put that employee down as working for 31 days, then an alert goes off as well. So we just want to program or teach the teach everyone watching the course how to program those alerts because they're important because they're they're protecting the integrity of the model preventing somebody from putting something inappropriate into a cell and then you know this is going maybe a little bit deep into the context but those are linked to the cover page so that if a new user opens it up they'll see right away that you know there's a problem here we've we've tripped something and, and they'll investigate it further yeah, that's a, it's a good point. Um, the often think about the cover pages like the dashboard in an in an automobile, and you know if something was going wrong in your car, an alert was going off. That's exactly where you'd want to see it up on the dashboard, you know, right in front of you, so that you'd be aware like immediately, and you wouldn't miss it. So that's the idea. We also find that <clears throat> by putting alerts on the cover page, it also is instilling confidence in the person who opens the model and sees that for the first time because they're saying oh wow they were you know they um they had the wherewithal to program alerts in so that we would know and it's actually really comforting to see a panel of alerts that are telling you all of them are telling you everything's okay you know it's really comforting to know that those checks are going on and that uh, everything's in check nothing's flashing red and <laughs> exactly the, the person who built the model actually took the effort to build a cover page you know, for the purpose of communicating up front what's, mm -hmm. what's kind of happening behind the scenes. Excellent. So what can we expect uh, next from you regarding FP&A? Yeah, so the, the next course coming up, um, as we mentioned, is, is all about forecasting the external um, contractors uh, for, for the company, which brings about its own challenges that are slightly different from, from forecasting the employees. And then these are, of course, all a part of a, a large series. And um, there will be in there in total seven FP&A courses that all utilize the same underlying Excel model, which is quite complex. That's the reason why it's it's broken into seven seven different courses to focus on different areas of the model. And it's a good thing that I, I've taken the the revenue forecasting course and the headcount uh, mm -hmm. forecasting analysis course. What I really appreciate was they were about three hours or less in duration. Yeah, it's nice to have a um, nice bite-sized piece that you could you could fit into an evening or you know an afternoon if you had available without spending you know a couple of days or even a week on the course. Right. Okay. Well, Duncan, we'll see you again when we discuss the uh, contractor forecasting course. And thanks mm -hmm. a lot for your time. Absolutely. Thanks, Sim. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.